Hi, this is Georgia. And I'm Renee, and welcome to Zen and Tech, where we try to center our inner geek and uh, live better, more connected lives. Zen and Tech is brought to you today by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com slash zen and, and enter offer code zen at checkout. A better web starts with your website. Georgia, how are you doing? I'm good, Renee. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. You know what? What? It is fitness month again. Fitness month again. Yes. <laughs> I'm dressed for it. We're doing it later this year. We did it last time we did it, I think, in February to kind of do it the New Year's resolution. But this year we're doing it uh, just to get ready for summer. I, I like it better. I think that everyone's trying to uh, be a little healthier. The weather is warm. It's nice. You can do more things if you're in a cold climate, as I am. So, yeah, I like it when we're doing it now. Yeah, so uh, I guess what I wanted to talk to you about tonight was motivation, like both getting and staying motivated, because that's so that's so difficult. That is what everyone talks about. Everyone would like to exercise more, would like to be a little bit more fit, but how do you keep at it? That's so I, I would not like to exercise more. I'd like to be able to take a little pill and instantly become more fit. <laughs> Fair, but you're not getting the same reaction. You really have to do it. Part of the action is because it is difficult, you uh, feel more inspired afterwards. So Now, we've talked about this before. There really is a difference. Uh, I don't know if there's a difference or not, but there's exercise and there's activity. And I know like, I work behind a desk. It's a standing desk, but I work behind a desk for eight hours plus a day. Kids sit behind a desk at school for eight hours plus a day. This is not how humans evolved. Humans evolved to hunt, to gather, to farm. Previously, if we sat, you know, sat down for eight hours, even if we stood around for eight hours, we would be considered useless people. We're not, we're not made. We're not made for sitting around for long, extended periods of time. It is not good for our health. Now, if I even have to reach for the remote to change a channel, I'm upset with that. There's a problem. It used to be that our day was spent uh, hunting, gathering, doing different things, seeking out new environments, and or running or hunting predators which, though seems really strenuous and stressful, was good for our health. It kept us going, and now our lives are mainly just sitting around trying to do as little work as possible. Kind of reminds me of the movie WALL-E, where everyone's sitting around on these moving chairs, and we've all become like um, blob people. You know, some days after being on the couch for a while, I feel like that. Yeah, so we evolved to be these active, dynamic, moving creatures, and now we, leave, we live very sedentary lifestyles, which is almost why exercise has become a thing. In a normal, not a normal world, but an ancestral world, we'd just be, quote-unquote, exercising all day as part of our everyday activity. But now it seems like you really have to make a concerted effort to get your exercise in. Right. It used to be just part of our lifestyle. If you had to get water, you had to get food, you had to travel. And so because of that, we would because we had to. Now, because we don't really have to, the water pretty much comes to us. We don't have to do it, so we don't, because again, we're also made to conserve energy, which, if you can think that there wasn't a lot of food, that would be a great survival maintenance. But now food is plentiful, and we still have this fail-safe of trying to conserve energy. Lots of food, want to conserve energy. And then we have chocolate all over the place. It's really not good for our bodies, but also it's not good for our brain. So previously our motivator was survival. If you wanted to eat, if you wanted to not be eaten, if you wanted to have a, you know, a good crop on your farm, you had to do all these physical things. Now, in, instead of that, we're left to find our own motivators. And I'll admit, it's hard. I mean, it is so easy to just sit behind a computer and type. It is hard to get up and do exercise just for exercise's sake. Well, that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to give the reasons why you want to exercise, plus some things that can help you on the right track. And nothing is perfect. You have to be really honest with what type of person you are. And then also to know all of the great benefits that you get from exercising, which can help you get back on the track if you fall off of it. Now, are, are we just going to deal with exercise, or are we going to consider like nutrition and that stuff as all part and parcel of living a healthier, better life? 
We're going to deal with all of it for okay. sure, but today we're going to focus mainly on staying motivated to exercise. But yes, we're going to talk about like sleep is all, all of this works together in one package, but today we're going to mainly focus on exercise. So I really do have to get up. You <laughs> yes, you really do have to get up. All right, so why is motivation, well, first of all, why is it hard? Why is it difficult? Why do I not just intrinsically want to do this? Well, because, as I said before, food was scarce. And if we wasted energy needlessly, we would die off because we're wasting it where we do not need. So we are made to take the path easiest for ourselves so that we don't waste energy and increase the chances that we can die off. Now, we've evolved much faster from our subsistence lifestyle into being able to have, if you're lucky where you live, food that is exceptionally plentiful, that is easy to get, and there's less and less people that are living below the poverty line, depending on, of course, where you live. So now that we have so much food that we want to stay sedentary because we don't want to waste energy, and then we're spending time eating because eating also makes us feel happy. So we're getting a little shot of dopamine, which is our little brain's, you know, happy hormone that feels comforting to us also from eating. And then we continue the cycle because the longer that we feel sedentary, we also don't get the same amount of dopamine and feeling happy and calm in our brain as well. So, so upset, basically more. sitting on a sofa watching Green Arrow do those crazy pull-ups, eating Cheetos is uh, almost a self-fulfilling doom. Rather yes. than, than doing those crazy pull-ups myself while he eats Cheetos. Right, because then you're going to be a little angry at yourself for eating so many Cheetos, although they are delicious, I completely understand why. And then you're going to watch more TV, and it's going to be more difficult as well. A body in motion wants to stay in motion, and you're also slowing down your metabolism. The problem with slowing down your metabolism is that you are no longer burning as many calories either. So eating one bowl of Cheetos may have taken a certain amount of time to burn off, let's say two hours, now that you've sat on the couch, your metabolism has slowed down. That means that your body is not converting energy as quickly. And so now it might take three hours to burn off that bowl of Cheetos. So pretty much what I'm saying is if you exercise, you can eat more Cheetos. Maddening. It's maddening, I tell you. So <laughs> how do I get motivated, Georgia? How do I want to do this? Well, I think one of the things that people don't realize, and I think it's kind of a neat trick, is that Exercise is great for your brain. Most people don't know this. One is it's great for learning. So the more that you exercise, the better that you can. So if you're studying for a text, it's actually good to give yourself a 15-20 minute exercise, cool down period of time, and then study. Our brains are then primed for taking in knowledge because if we see new surroundings, if we're having to hunt or fight, our brains are saying, oh, a lot of dangerous new scenarios, we better start learning so that we don't do something that could uh, put us in danger. So that's one thing. And the second thing is that we hit off all of these great endorphins and we get a little shot of dopamine from exercising so we lower our pain threshold and we feel happier about ourselves. So it's, n and also younger, it will keep you feeling and being younger. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's true. So exercise is good not just for your body, but also for your own feeling of sense of self, sense of strength, and intelligence. It's pretty much like a super pill, except it comes from push-ups, pull-ups, or doing any other activity where you have to keep moving. So, I mean, what you say is all fine, but again, it's one of those, those, those continuing themes of our show where that's such a future benefit for so much present annoyance. <laughs> I want to know how, like, what what will help me get going now, not like some benefit that you know, some abstract benefit in the future. <laughs> okay. Well, first is you have to decide if you really want to do this, yes or no. I think that a lot of people say I will exercise when it feels right. If you're gonna wait till it feels right you might as well just not. It's not going to feel right. This is going to be effort. Exercise is effort and You're it is... You're not telling me. It's, it's, a lot, it's difficult. It is difficult. There's a reason why people don't want to do it. I'm sorry, I'm not going to lie to you. It, I would love to say this is all, you know, happy, uh, fluffy clouds, uh, you know, rainbows and unicorns. Right, well, let me ask you this then. Let's, let's say I'm loath to exercise. I, I believe, and you tell me if I'm wrong, that I can Jedi mind trick myself into this, that I can change the parameters of the equation. So, for example, if I don't want to exercise, maybe I want to play video games. 
and maybe I could do something like get, uh, I don't know, an Xbox and connect and get a dancing game. And then, oh, I happen to be getting exercise, but I'm actually playing a video game. Exactly. So what you can do is once you figure out what works for you and what doesn't, game the system. Be really honest with yourself. So yeah, make exercise fun. Instead of making it something that seems contrived and you're just standing in one place staring at a blank wall, if you have much more fun playing Dance Dance Revolution, go do that. You're moving, you're feeling silly, you're racking up points, you can um, play against your friends, humiliate each other. <laughs> <laughs> Learn moves that will make your children embarrassed to know you. I'm doing when, the when Superman, on their wedding. son. I'm doing the Superman. <laughs> I've done that way too many times. It's it's just it, make it enjoyable. And if you're not motivated to do it alone, I'm not great for exercising on my own. I'm I'm fully trained to be able to do that. I join a club. Put okay, your... hold on, hold on. I, I want to get more into this fun thing first. Sure. Before we get before we get onto other people. So okay. we have we have video games, and there are video games that actually require. Like, like you to move around, right? Like there was, um, what was the original Nintendo one? The Wii, right? And they yes. had the sports games, and there was boxing, and there was tennis. Yes. And now yeah, we they have a lot of fun. Yeah, now we have the the Connect thing, and that's sort of I find that interesting because it's got a little bit of competitiveness, I guess, especially if you do have someone else there. But uh, maybe even it's online, maybe it's even beating your own score. But that seems to me like a really fun, like like fun could be a a a, a way of getting me to do something that I wouldn't do just on my own. Exactly. You get to enjoy, you can play a video game, you are racking up points, and you're moving because the, the cool part about playing a video game is that it's going to force you to move because you want to get your score even though your body is saying, nah, I don't really want to. And that's the difference between doing, say, a workout video, which is also really great, but you're watching the person and you might say, well, you know what, no one's going to track me if I go a little bit lax on this movement or not. With a video game, you're going to get shut out if you don't pass the score, so that motivates you maybe to stretch a little bit further, jump a little bit higher, reach a little bit more to the side, and so you're going to probably get a little bit more of a workout, and hopefully you'll enjoy it more as well. Yeah, and I think it's important because video games traditionally, up until recently, they have all been about um, sitting down with a controller in front of something, which is back to the sitting down sort of a problem. Yeah, you're exercising with just your thumbs and fingers. Yeah, and like maybe you have you know titanically strong thumbs, but mm -hmm. this new wave of stuff I think is really exciting and really interesting, and it's also, if you don't already have something, maybe an excuse to get that video game system you've been been looking for just if you if the price of getting it is maybe that you have to do these highly active games as well right and you can enjoy it you can play against your friends you can bring friends over you're also listening to music which is great for a motivator and or the the video game sounds and you're motivated to keep going even though your body might say you know what i want to take a break so the it might push is you weak, a little but the ego is strong exactly so are there other ways to have to make it more fun, to make it an activity that you enjoy rather than dread? Like, I know some people respond to music. Like if you have, if you have great stuff on your phone or, or, or your, your MP3 player, or even if you subscribe to a service like, so, like, uh, sorry, like Songza or um, I'm so terrible at these, RDO or uh, Spotify, one of those things, music seems to me to be something that just drives you. It inspires you. you. What The great part about music is that you're not thinking about how much I'm suffering. It can move you to greater heights when you're running or jumping or deciding to play whatever sport you want to play. It helps, like it's almost like your background theme music. So it works great in movies and it also works great in real life. Now I have a couple suggestions for music if I may. Sure, please. So one is, I mean, it depends on how you do it. Like if you are, if you want headsets, uh, because you're either jogging out on a street or you're at a gym or you're someplace where you can't, like your music can't be loud. It has to be something in, just inclusive for you. Get really good sports headsets because a lot of the headsets that come with stuff, a lot of the ones that are commonly sold are not meant for intense activity and they'll fall out or they won't fit or they'll drive you nuts in a way that distracts you from your exercise. But there are headsets that either loop over your ear or are specially made. Uh, I mean, Georgia, you and I have been to uh, shows like Macworld or CES where people do backflips wearing headsets. And there's stuff that is specifically designed for that that I think is really good to have. 
they're amazing and there's headsets now that are exceptionally comfortable and won't fall out when you're doing almost anything plus if you're more inclined to water sports you can get I think overboard and some other companies make uh, earphones that are completely waterproof so and as well as a pack that you can put your mp3 player or your smartphone into so that you can listen to your music while you're swimming or I don't know if wakeboarding would be dangerous with with your um, earphones in, but whatever you really enjoy to do, kite surfing, I would love to do kite surfing. So another recommendation is I I just got a rowing machine because you know I I, I hurt myself. I, I have a detached ligament in my or tendon or something in my ankle, and I can't do the the Brazilian jiu-jitsu that I used to do a lot. So I got a rowing machine because it seemed it seemed like a good exercise and something that I could do even with a messed up ankle. But it's loud enough that I can't hear just, you know, a tablet or a, or a phone or an MP3 player on its own, but it's also at home, so I don't really have to wear uh, headphones, which kind of drive kind of drive me nuts. So I'm using a, uh, a jam box, a Jawbone jam box, and they're different manufacturers. Beats makes the pill, and there are all sorts of really good um, boxes like this, and it's a little Bluetooth player, and you just put it somewhere close by, and it makes, you know, whether you're listening to music, I don't listen to a lot of music. I watch a lot of TV and stuff, so I'll watch Netflix or iTunes or something while I'm exercising. It also helps me keep track of the amount of time I'm doing it because, you know, there's natural breaks in the show where commercials used to be. <laughs> right. Um, and this is loud enough that I can hear it even over the noise of the machine. Um, and even if I'm doing body weight training or something, there's just, you know, your breathing gets heavier, you're, you get a little bit of a pounding in your head. It's, it's nice to have ambient sound uh, that you can really enjoy while you're working out. Right, and it just keeps you keeps you going. So it's nice to have some music that is yours that you've chosen that you find that's motivating. I have uh, on my phone just a set of tracks that's just for you know fight music. So I use that for whenever I'm training, and it just keeps me going, which I really like. I have a Sono system at home, uh, and I would love to just have an extra Play One speaker in my workout room, but they don't support AirPlay, so I'm going to just complain about that again, just for the record. You should. You should. They should. They should support that. They should absolutely support that. <laughs> All right, so Georgia, you mentioned before, and you mentioned here, like wakeboarding and, and water activities and stuff that you can do with other people. So I know there are some people who are incredibly self-disciplined who just say, I'm going to exercise, and that single act of will makes them exercise. But there's something to be said, and, you know, when we did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you did not want to be the one person who was behind everybody else. It was, again, an ego motivator, a group motivator. And that seems very powerful for some people, too. Right. I'm, I'm not great for being self-motivated, though I'm fully trained to be able to do it. And if I'm teaching a class for other people, I will train and train exceptionally hard. So I put my money where my mouth is and I join a club and do something that the activity is fun and I want to do. So uh, we're planning to start archery. Not a high physical fitness still in cardio, though I think that I'm going to get a lot of arm strength in order to do it. Uh, and also I do kickboxing and jujitsu at a secondary location. One is because I have that group mentality. I have other people there, they're going to be waiting for me and hoping that I'm coming to train. So I'm going to feel bad if I let them down. The second thing is that I have a teacher that's there and saying, hey, work harder, what are you doing? And I enjoy that. So it appeals to kind of my type A personality of wanting to be achievement oriented. And there's a whole bunch of goals that I'm trying to hit in whatever class I want to do. It makes it a little bit more fun. You're exercising without thinking about exercising. You're thinking about getting good at a skill, which I really like. Yeah, and the one thing that I like about that, too, is it's almost like the video game thing where you become motivated to succeed. Like, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if you're on an exercise bike and you get tired, you can stop. If you're grappling and you get tired, someone's going to choke you out or try to hurt your arm. I mean, you have a lot of motivation to keep going. If you're playing soccer, I mean, sports in general, combat sports, yes, but sports in general are great because, you know, your team depends on you or that someone else is going to get a goal. There's all sorts of things that force you to keep going even beyond the, where, you know, your lazy muscle engages. Exactly, exactly. Um, you can also choose to have other people that are wanting to exercise to go with you. You can enjoy your time with your friends, chat while if you're choosing to, to jog or to train. You're with each other and you're keeping each other motivated and hopefully supportive to each other as well, which is really, really nice. Yeah, so... You already have the thing like, you know, gamify it a little bit, make it into a gameplay, and now you have adding a second element to it. So if you know that you on your own are not responsible enough or, or disciplined enough to do it, you add, you know, the other person who's going to sort of make sure that you do it. 
And a, a sort of a third element for me is always accountability. Uh, like if if there's like no if there's a nebulous goal or no nothing keeping track of it, it seems easy to cheat the system. But we have a whole bunch of technology now that's a really cool way. Even if you don't have somebody else, even if you don't want to get like let's say video games annoy you or whatever, uh, you have ways technological ways of being accountable to yourself. Um, can I go through a couple of them? Oh, uh, okay, sure. Uh, so like for example, I have a bunch of different. Um, fitness bands here. There's the Jawbone uh, Up, there's the Nike Fuel Band, and there's the um, Fitbit. And what these do is these measure steps. So let's say you, you, you don't have a video game, you don't have friends, but you have a goal. You decide to do 10,000 10, steps a day. This will let you measure that you've done them. And you can see, and a lot of the apps will do a graph, like red is you haven't even done 1,000 steps, you lazy, whatever, such and such but then you get to yellow, you get to green. You see your progress, so it's gamified in a different way. Georgia, is that a dog? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, continue. All right, I'm going to ask about that dog again later. Yeah, I was supposed to be with the go with a friend. Okay, so no, so let's do that. Let's go back to that for a second. Okay. So your friend is now a small Ewok-like creature. Well, some people will say to me, Georgia, I don't have any friends or they don't want to train, and so you can just... Bring your pet, bring your pet to train with you, so they can inspire you, uh, make it a little bit more fun. If you have social anxiety and you're worried about training in front of other people, going to a dog park or bringing a ball and running around with whatever pet you might have, gerbil, cat, <laughs> dog, um, it makes it a little bit more fun, and you don't feel that bad because you're playing ball with your dog as you run around. This hey, is Mila. That <laughs> hi, Mila. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome because and it, a sort of play, I guess, that fits in with the other thing is you don't have to play electronically. If you have a dog, you can run with your dog, you can go to the park with your dog. If you have kids, you can go, you know, play catch with your kids, play touch football with your kids. Uh, you can even go to a go do jungle gym stuff. There's all sorts of physical play activity you can do. Definitely, and you just want to make sure that it makes it a little bit less. Um, I think that people look at exercise and think that it has to be really, really strenuous and really hard on the system, which it doesn't. Start small, small, light, easy. That Just enjoy a little bit of saying that I'm going to move. Even if that means that I'm just going to stretch for today. That's good enough. All right, so Georgia, for people who are listening and not watching, can, I, 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 we didn't mention what kind of dog you're holding up, but it is. it oh. does look to me like a tiny Ewok. <laughs> she is a Bichon Frise um, and a Shih Tzu mix. So, there Yub we go. Yub-nub. So cute. Yub-nub. <laughs> There you go. I know, but I think that's a, a, a fantastic idea, and that's another... I remember Jeff Gluckman from um, Muscle Balance and Posture Therapy always used to say the best exercise was just doing things that you would normally have done, like even if, like to the extreme, I guess, parkour, uh, like you yeah. want to be Spider-Man, but just getting out there and doing and feeding your body all these different kinds of motion. Right. Sorry, I kind of interrupted you when you talked about tracking your progress. Yes. So what kind of things do we have that we can track our progress so that we know how much we're exercising? Because if I just track it myself, 25 minutes kind of becomes 30. Well, no, or the opposite. It becomes five. I have done enough. You know, I don't have to do it anymore. That feels like a long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, so again, this is, and if you're wa listening, not watching, this is a collection of stuff that I've tried. The uh, Nike Fuel Band, the Jawbone Up, and the... Um, Fitbit, uh, I forget which Fitbit this is, Flex, I think. And this is just like you wear it as you're exercising and it counts the amount of steps that you're doing. I mean, some phones, especially if they have a motion coprocessor co like the iPhone 5S, they can do it by themselves. You can just install an app. But you don't always want your phone with you. You don't always want, I mean, I'm sure you could put a tablet in a backpack if you really had to. But you don't need, always want that with you. And this is something you can simply strap to your wrist. And if your goal, again, is 10,000 steps in a day, you can actually look, and it will tell you how many steps you've done in that day. And that lets you be accountable to yourself. Right. I also have the Shine right here, which is a small... It's a, What I like about the Shine is that it can... It's just a small, round disc, which will fit into, say, a necklace. It has a little necklace add-on if you want to, which it magnetically fits in place, which is really cool. It has a wristband, and it also has a clip. And it will tell the time and also track your progress, and it will set up goals, and it's tracked on your smartwatch, smartphone. Yeah, and that's the really nice thing is that this, like, and there's other things too, right? Like there's the, um, what is the scale called again? I have it right you here. Do? I do. Nice. I, 
I love my Wee Things scale. Yes, that's a um, Wee Things. It will track your weight. Now, scales are, for some people, this can be exceptionally demotivating for some people. So I, you have to make sure that you know yourself really well. I like looking at the scale when I'm training and when I'm working out. I already know that I'm going to gain some muscle and I'm going to lose a little bit of fat if I'm having a diet that will work that way. But I'm doing it mostly for fitness. But the Wee Thing scale is nice in that it tracks it and it's beautiful and stylish at the same time. And I've had this scale now for two years and it works perfectly still. And the nice thing about it is, yes, you could have a regular scale and painstakingly write down, and you know how much I love analog stuff, I can barely fill out a check anymore, um, <laughs> and write it down yourself. But what this does is this scale is connected to the internet, and there's an app you can run on your smartphone, and it will keep track of all of that for you. So all you basically have to do is stand on it, and it will do all the document, all the, the onerous work for you. The nice thing of that is that you can track your, what you really want to do is you want to get to know your own body and the manner in which you work. So what you're doing is you're doing data. So you're going to find out if you always gain weight on the weekends, you're going to be able to take a look and say, okay, well this happens every single weekend, what am I doing on the weekends that's causing my weight to fluctuate? If you're female and it's a monthly thing, well you're like, okay, well it's cyclical. And so you can also take a look at where you might be tripping yourself up versus where you do really, really well. And if it's just emotional, if you're an emotional eater and you know you just had a breakup and you gain weight, then you understand that under stress or hardship, you end up eating more. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's something really important because we are also very different. So for some people, they just want the data. They want to look at the numbers. They want to know how many calories or how many steps. They want numbers that they can look at and and and, and action, I guess, you know, take action against. Other people don't have any inclination for numbers. They just want to know how they feel. Does this feel good? Does it not feel good? Do I feel accomplished? Do I not feel accomplished? Do I feel better? Do I feel worse? And I think the tracking stuff can still benefit you because it, you, you can start to associate how you feel with what the measurements are and then sort of come to, come to figure out what your ideal zone is, even if you could care less what the number attached to it is. And it's nice because you're, you're just taking a look at how you're doing it. Often we forget how much we exercise and how we make it feel. If you track all of these things and you know that exercise makes you feel better, there's a greater chance that you're going to continue. So one of the other things that's interesting is that, you know, so, uh, that I like about this is, for example, you mentioned some people don't like knowing what their weight is or it can be demotivational. I think that we're lucky that the technology allows us to have so much in our house now. So, for example, um, in the old days, you could get you know Richard Simmons or Jane Fonda workout tapes, uh, but now I, now you can actually just stream or download a lot of that kind of stuff into your house. You can have the scale and share it only with yourself. You can buy home training equipment. Like if let's say you're you for whatever reason you don't feel comfortable going to a gym, you don't have a great self image, or you just you're not comfortable being around people yet. Uh, you can do so much of this at home, um, and I know there's grow your bubble issues from other shows that we could that we could get into. <laughs> but if you are just if what you need to get started is privacy, there are so many options now that let you get started privately. Right, there's apps that have like you know just a seven minute workout or just do these yoga. T positions, start small, do something, and if you like to follow someone along, you can get something so that you have your own personal trainer in the privacy of your own home. Yeah, and I think that's really important is what you said is to start small because some people will look at it and go, oh, I've got to do an hour of this and I've got to do it four times a week or something, and it just looks like such a big obstacle, an insurmountable obstacle in front of them. Yeah, I say like start with 15 minutes, and this is light cardio. So you're not going full out because if I know a lot of people are like, but then I don't feel like I've trained. But if you go full out and it's a horrible experience, you're exceptionally sore the next day, it lessens the chances that you're going to continue. Even if you're not feeling well, um, you know, I often start the day and I just do um, 10 wall push-ups or on the counter, just a mini tiny push-ups and some stretching and just five or 10 squats. That's it. That's just the beginning just to get me started for the day. It makes me feel good. It increases, again, your cardiovascular system. It's sending all of your body to say, listen, get ready, let's do this. And there's a greater chance that you might work out again. But even if that's all you do is just get up, stretch a little bit, move around your arms, that's a beginning. As long as you're doing more than you did before, that's progress. 
So um, this is a complete tangent, but that gets me thinking about excuse making. Like like you said, um, people can exercise really hard the first day and then feel a lot of pain the next day and decide to stop or use that as an excuse to stop. Or it could be raining outside and they just can't go for the run. Or it, they, you know, oh, I, I really, really have to get to this email now. I'm going to have to put off exercise. Why do we make those kind of excuses and how can we sort of not do that? <laughs> It's a little bit of cognitive dissonance. We don't really, we want to make, we, we lie to ourselves, we lie to ourselves all the time. The problem is if we believe those lies. So exercise is for many people unpleasant. If it's amazing for you, great, go with that. So we find fabulous believable excuses that will say, you know what, it doesn't feel that bad because I have a reason not to do it. So, um, I could say I'm massively sick today, I really am, uh, I apologize for that, and so I'm not going to do this podcast because that makes me nervous and I might do something wrong. What you want to say is that no matter what, I'm going to do it even if it's just going to be, you know, two push-ups, two jumping jacks, two squats, and that's it. Or even I'm just going to go to the gym, train for five minutes, and then leave. You want to be really flexible and good to yourself. But when you're doing those lies to yourself, what I what I often have people do is I have them track why they didn't exercise. So say that I would like for someone to exercise three times a week for 15 minutes. No one can say they didn't have time. So they make great other excuses like I didn't have the right running shoes, um, you know, it was raining outside, I only really like to exercise to Pink Floyd and none was, I, I wiped my music storage right now, so then I didn't. And so I say, well, what was the excuse that you didn't exercise for? And then, is that true? Or was that just a deflection so you don't exercise? And nine times out of ten, you know, unless there's an emergency and you had to go to the hospital, it's just because you made a fabulous excuse that didn't make you feel so bad because it was almost believable. So... The, that goes back to what you said earlier about momentum, and I like I like to believe, and tell me if I'm wrong, that exercising is habit forming, and then not exercising is habit forming. Like I know when you stop something, it becomes easier and easier just to stay stopped. So I like I, I hope that once you get started, it becomes easier and easier to stay doing it. Well, I think that people think that once they start exercising, they're just going to continue exercising the entire time, and they get this perfectionistic kind of. If I stopped one day, well, I've already ruined everything. Or if I ate, you know, six jelly donuts, I've already destroyed it, so who cares? This is about saying, you know what, I might have a bump here or there, but I will get back on that road and continue even if I do. So put the bumps of having, you know, I'm going to have two days of rest or two days where I'm going to, you know, just be a couch potato for those days into your training and say that if you know suddenly something happens and you get sick so you're not going to be able to train as much I'm just gonna you know get dressed in my workout gear do just a little bit and then go back to your rest and sleep yeah I mean that's interesting to me because there are apps like you know 100 push-ups 100 sit-ups 100 pull-ups that give you daily goals and again it's a bit of a gamification because if you just have an exercise tape or you just have a bike or you just have right. a, a thing you can you can not do it, but if you have you know this app which will sound an alarm, which will make you physically tap a button to say you did it, I mean, yeah, you could just lie and tap that button anyway, but it, it's something that sets small incremental goals that get hard, that, that not get harder, but you know take you along a path, and that seems interesting to me. I think that sounds interesting, but my my worry with it is that you know sometimes it might not because you're not setting it yourself or you might again like when I uh, set up my shine I set it to like moderate exercise I never ever met that goal so you also want to say to yourself that it's okay if you have to go back and say you know what that might have been too much I'm gonna go back and instead of doing 15 minutes I'm gonna do five minutes or instead of five I'm gonna do two and not feel hard on yourself but say I'm happy because I did more than I did the other day or this is as much as I could do today and that's good as long as you're moving a little it's better than not moving at all yeah um <laughs> 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 no, I, I I totally get that. Um, you get it, but you don't buy it. No, I no, I, I I buy it too. It's just that I I like that idea because again, you off we often set ourselves up for a failure. Like we we set mm -hmm. an impossible goal and we don't reach it. We blame ourselves and decide we should never do it again. Yeah, it starts that cycle of self hatred, which you don't want to start. 
we're, we're not going to be perfect. Life happens. Things change. This is something that you're going to want to make a priority. This should be your health and well-being is something that is of primary importance to your own personal well-being. You have to make yourself a priority. And unfortunately, um, sleep and exercise um, and then eating are often some of the first things that go off of your plate when you're too busy or too stressed or life happens. And you want to put those as a higher priority because it does change your complete well-being, the way that you look at the world. It will increase your positivity. It sends out good happy hormones, lowers the effects of depression. It's really, really important. And I'm not talking about for your body. We're talking about also for your brain and for your youth. So, Georgia, can I just interrupt to ask you uh, if, if I can tell you about something awesome? Please. So, this episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com slash zen and enter offer code zen at checkout. A better website, sorry, a better web starts with your website. And I was just thinking, based on our conversation, that you could, for example, create a website using Squarespace that all it does is share your, you know, whether it's for you or whether it's for your family or whether it's for a club or an activity that you are part of, you could create a website that helps keep track of your games or your exercise or your, you know, your matches or whatever it is that you are doing. I like that idea because if you have something that is um, beautiful, well produced, that keeps track of your progress, there's a greater chance that you're going to keep doing it. When people are tracking their, you know, say I, you know, your positive goals towards whatever they may be, and you do it in a nice book, you're going to look at that and think better of that than not. And so it would be nice if you made a nice website for it and you can track it and you don't have to share it with anyone else if you don't want. Or you could have a little competition site with your friends and see who you get to beat. Yeah, and absolutely. And if you're thinking that it's too hard to do, I mean, Squarespace is simple, it's easy. They've got beautiful designs made by professional designers. It's responsive design, so it looks great on your computer when you're building it. Also looks great on your on your tablet, on your smartphone. It's got drag and drop content, so you can put everything exactly where you want it to be. If you do know how to code, of course, you can go in and customize it, but you absolutely don't need to. It's also got 24/7 support, so you can call in, you can so you can email in, you can do a live chat. Uh, you can get all the help you need. It starts at $8 a month. It, if you sign up for a year, it includes a free domain name. Uh, it also, you know, it, let's say you're in the fitness business. Let's say you want to sell terrific fitness products to other enthusiasts. You can set up a store. You don't have to go find some third-party service. You don't have to worry about merchant numbers or, or any of the stuff, you know, any of the heavy overhead that can go with e-commerce. You can just add a store to it, get going day one. You know what the best thing is, though, Georgia? Tell me. There, you can start a trial with no credit card. You can just go in there and build it. When you decide you want to sign up, you know, if it's for you, all you do is go to squarespace.com slash zen. You enter offer code zen, and you get 10% off your first purchase. You also support this show, which, you know, is really cool of you. Um, so I want to thank Squarespace for their support. I want to thank them for supporting Zen and Tech. I want to thank you guys for supporting them to support us. Uh, Squarespace, a better web starts with your website. I like that. I like the 24-hour support. I would need that. Uh, I, I, would need, I need 24-hour support to get me motivated. That's what I need. <laughs> That's true. And talking about that, spending some money on your own training is a good idea. So if that means hiring a personal trainer to kick you into gear or if you're going to join a club or a gym or whatever it might be, sometimes people decide that it's worth more because they've spent a little money on something. So it, it you know, yeah, because you say, you know what, I'm going to get my money's worth out of this. And so I'm going to do it. People do look towards things that are uh, free as less valuable as things that they spend money on. It's a kind of interesting philosophy of because we spent that much money, then it must be worth more. And so if you do that with your fitness, you'll feel that it is more important and you're not going to want to let it go to waste. You know what? I know the economics of this probably wouldn't work out, but I, you know what I would love? Tell me. I would love a gym or whatever it is, a place that the more you go, the less you pay. So like you, if you go to every session or you never miss something, you get money back. Or you know, if you miss a lot of sessions, they actually charge you more because you could spend even a thousand bucks up front and just decide you're lazy and like, all right, fine, a thousand dollars is gone. 
But if you're lazy and you know that every time you're lazy, it's going to cost you more and more money, I think you would get yourself there no matter what. I, it's, it's very interesting because there is a system for like how you reward yourself, which is kind of what you're saying, is that if you know I spend $1,000 to the gym and every time I train, they give me $5 back until it reaches to maybe $100 to cover the cost of the gym, I think that a lot of people would go, but after a while, because it's so little each time and our laziness might increase, we often with rewards need to up the ante to keep us involved. Though, with money, I would work for just stickers, um, the same thing for achievements in a game. So, you know, if you can just find even a reward for yourself after you've trained, so if I do this training, then I can do X, Y, or Z, that could work out also, but I like that idea. You know, $1,000 and I pay you every time you come in. I think that that would be a great idea. I think a lot of people would sign up and the gym would probably make a lot of money from people that just quit anyways. It's forget, keep the money. Yeah, the lazy people <laughs> the active people. Right, and unfortunately though, I consider myself quite fit. I'm kind of one of the people that will not train just to train. I don't like running. I don't find an enjoyment in that. I, I actually get a little bit stressed because once I've ran out, I have to come back. So I'm just angry that I know that however far I've gone, I have to redo that distance to get back to my, my starting point. You know, if I had like a, a car that drove behind me and would drive me back, I might feel better about that. But for me, I need to join a secondary place in order to keep up it or doing something that I enjoy so I'm not thinking that, you know, I need like a dodgeball team or, or something else to keep me going so that well, I enjoy what, what I'm doing. You know what geek culture would tell you? Tell me. Don't leave anything for the swim back. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. So you mentioned the stickers before and you mentioned rewarding for yourself. How do those kinds of systems work? Because I've always heard about them, but I don't quite understand the dynamics. Well, it's nice if someone else is the person that's giving you the reward every time you do it, but if not, you can self-reward. It doesn't work as effectively, but you could make yourself, um, you know, an application on your phone or your laptop or your tablet in which, you know, you could make it, uh, you know, as a sheet and every time that you exercise, you give yourself something. You could even do it the old low-tech way of pen and paper with stickers. What? If you... <laughs> <laughs> what is paper? Um, you could do that as well, just to kind of let you know and track your progress. You could even do it straight up in your calendar and just say, trained today. So I mean, like, 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 what do you do? Do you say, like, when I get 20 stickers, I can get myself a Sunday, or I can go to a movie, or I mean, like, like how, how do you have to put that together? Rewards work the best in that you get something as close to the activity as possible. So the nice thing is with exercising, you get your first reward, which is during the exercise, you feel good, you're vascularizing your system, you're warming up your muscles, you're increasing your dopamine, you're, lower, you're increasing your serotonin, which makes you feel calm, you're getting those happy endorphins that make you feel good, that runner's high. So that's the first thing. And then after, you're acknowledging to yourself, you're validating, I did good today, I did something for me. I think that everyone, you know, no one, re often people don't want to exercise beforehand, but everyone's really happy usually after they did. So you want to just track that and remember how good that felt. I mean, no, screw that. I want a present. You can you can definitely do it through whatever present you want, um, but it shouldn't be too big. It shouldn't be like a trip to Cancun. It should be something small and incremental, like you know every three days or if you do four days a week, you get to do something. And you can do something small by tracking it, which is also a little reward on um, an app, on your tablet or phone, whatever you happen to have with you. So that tracks it. And then after, I don't know what would be your reward, Renee. What do you, what are you doing? Because I know I already... that you're training. I don't have any, f I can't, I, I don't even know how to put a system like that together. I have no idea. I mentioned Sundays because it seemed, you know, seemed like something obvious, but <laughs> I'm not good with Perhaps that. Perhaps counterproductive, but yes. No, I'm not good with, like, I find, I'm not good with managerial overhead because I find okay. either I use it to distract myself or it takes so much time that it, it takes away from what I actually want to accomplish that I'm trying to manage. Right, right. You, if, if, the best thing is just to try to make it part of your day. 
you know, you wake up in the morning, you do, you know, five jumping jacks, five push-ups, like something really small that kickstarts your metabolism, it kickstarts your system, and then it's going to be easier to do something else later. And then make it just five or ten minutes. You want it to seem insignificant, and then you start off there, something really, really minutely small. And then, you know, always remember to just think about how you're proud of yourself for doing this. It's really difficult to stick to something if it's not already in your nature so you want to feel proud and I like to write it down somewhere even if it's just you know a small mark or you know an emoji on on an application it does not have to be something that you're you're journaling a whole bunch of different stuff to um, just something that says you know what I did this for me and then you know you feel a little bit better afterwards so let me ask you this then I'm gonna, th I'm gonna throw a curveball in your direction what happens when something goes wrong? Because life is great at, you know, you just start getting going and then either you hurt yourself, something happens that, you know, so to a loved one that pulls you out of your routine, you suddenly have to go on. How do you deal with things that make it harder for you to do what you're starting to get used to doing? How do you stay motivated? Well, it's going to happen. First, you should expect that that's going to happen. I think that sometimes people uh, have this idealized, I, you know, thought of what is exercise going to be like. It's not going to be like that. It's not going to be fabulous. You're not going to love it every second of the day. But you want to say to yourself that, you know, no matter what, I'm going to start off again small and get back on that horse. Even if it's, you know, say that you've uh, hurt your ankle, then you can work up your upper body. Oh, so that's a good idea. So you might have to change the activity, but you don't want to stop doing activity. You, you should try to do something, even if it's just, you know, three, five squats. Like, I don't know anyone that could not fit three to five squats or just wall push-ups or even um, arm lifts. If you're in bed rest and you cannot get out of bed for whatever reason, you can just move your arms or stretch. Just stretch your body at the beginning of the day if you, you know, again, you don't want to do something that's going to hurt you. But just begin with that. People often kind of, you know, get all into it. And it just seems overwhelming. And if you're doing an hour and a half a day, that's a lot of intense workout and it seems daunting. And then if you go back to five, you might feel bad about it. So just know that that can happen and that's okay. Another neat trick is um, dress as if you're training. What? Just say, I'm just going to put my training outfit on. Oh, okay. Look the part. If not, fake it. Just look like you're training, and there's a greater chance that you're going to want to train. If you hang out with other people that are training, you're going to be like, oh, you know, I'm going to fake training a little bit so that I feel like, you know, the uh, group mentality. So I'm going to, you know, do a little light jog here or there. And that's the beginning. Well, I mean, come on, we're, we're Quebecers. Our culture is famous for buying really nice ski clothes just to stand at the, at the ski lodge and chat with, you know, attractive people who are actually skiing. Right. But again, it's okay. As long as you start somewhere, at least, you know, you look the part of that you are going to train. And it might just be taking a walk outside. It could be just walking up and down the stairs in your home, listening to some music, and starting to move your body. The more you move your body, the more limber and flexible it becomes, and you are warming up your muscles. So one of the things you mentioned is that you found jogging boring and I'm going to I'm willing to bet that over time almost any activity you'll either adapt to it and it won't be as beneficial as it was before or you'll just get bored of doing it so how important is changing things up and what kind of like do you change things up a lot do you preemptively do it do you change things up only when you get bored how do you keep things fresh this depends on your personality type. Some people like to stick at something that they're comfortable in, tried and true, and that's their comfort level. Other people need to have a change to keep up that feeling of excitement. You just want to be honest with yourself. Just like I know that I am not great for self-motivating, I'm better to be in a class or a club where other people are going to be there and people that I don't know too well because then I'm going to slack off a little bit because I know them <laughs> exceptionally well and I can, I can get away with that, unfortunately. And so you want to know who you are. If so, if you're getting bored, if you think that you're starting to drop off the activity list, if you're finding great excuses not to go, switch it up a little bit. Try something different. And so I have one of the other things that I found, again, because human beings are so remarkable at not doing things, is there'll be something like Fitness Month where you're like, oh, I'll wait till Fitness Month starts. Oh, it's too late. I'm never going to catch up. Oh, I'll, I'll start because I want to look great for my wedding or reunion or, you know, whatever the, you know, because I'm going to go to the beach. Oh, I waited too long. It'll never happen. Now I might as well not do it at all. 
we, we often do that. You want to do it for yourself. And once you've started something, just try to keep whatever was working, you know, doing it. You know, you want to keep, you know, again, it helps if you're in the milieu or other people that are doing it, if you can go back to your own, you know, inspirational journals to that, if you look, if you're staring at how you were before, and then just do a little tiny bit each day so that it becomes part of your day. If every morning you stretch, there's a greater chance that the next morning that you're going to kind of stretch. So you don't want to just do it because it's fitness month or because you have a wedding. You want to do it for yourself and remember how that felt. I don't know if that really answers your question fully. No, no, it absolutely does. I just, again, we're such good excuse makers. We're so good at finding any reason not to do things. And that, I think, is always my biggest problem is that, and, you know, my father had this saying, smart, you know, dumb people can think of one reason to do something. Smart people can think of a thousand reasons not to. Yes, and we often do. The thing you don't want to do is, is believe the lie. If you say to yourself, you know what, I should be exercising, but I'm not going to because I don't like what I look like, or I, I, I can't stare at the mirror, or I'm too tired, or I don't think it's that important, just be straight with yourself about that. But you really do want to ask yourself the why am I not exercising. If you set yourself a goal, was the goal too big? Are you not enjoying it? Are you too easily distracted? If you can't change yourself internally, you want to try to change your outside um, environment as much as you can so that it makes exercise easier. So if it means going to the gym every day and you're going to go there even if you're not going to exercise, you want to say, okay, I'm going to be in that milieu. It makes it a little easier. If you're going to put right in your living room uh, your treadmill or your rowing machine right in front so you have to stare at it constantly, at least you know that if you're avoiding it, you didn't forget. It's there staring at you, eyeballing you, you know, work out. You can sort of avoid its attention. You just don't look directly at it. You can, <laughs> you, you can hide it, make it look like something else. You can also set alarms for yourself that this is your time to train. Set a specific time when this is training time and turn off all your tech except for your inspirational music that's suddenly going to play and start goading you into doing it. And I guess, I mean, if you can afford it, you can always get a personal trainer because they are not your friend, they're not your spouse, they're not someone who's going to drop out on you, they're not someone, you know, and again, you're, you're paying for it like you mentioned earlier, but they're going to do, I mean, as long as you show up, they're going to make sure that you do what you need to do. You, you want to make sure it's something that you like. All right, so the last sort of question I have for you is we discussed nutrition and sleep and stuff. How important is it to do everything at once or is it better to, like, should I just start exercising or do I really have to start exercising and eating better and sleeping better all at the same time? It depends on you. I, I, the way that I feel about it is whatever you think that you can do towards making yourself healthier, great. If you find that overwhelming, start with whichever one is easiest and you're going to have the greatest sticking power. Each one is going to bleed into the other. If you're sleeping better, you're going to have, find it's going to be an easier time in order to exercise. If you are you know, making sure that you're hydrated, it's going to make it easier. And if you're choosing to exercise, it's going to make sure that you're doing all the others. You're going to be able to eat better. So I think that they inspire yourself to be better for all of them. But for some people, that's too overwhelming and it's too much of a change in their system. So again, it's kind of personalized. I like people to do all three. And I think that you should monitor all three if possible just to see if you are eating uh, 16 poutines in a day, you're really not going to feel like exercising. It's too much. What if, if I jog to the poutine place? Well, that's something. But again, you're, it's, it's almost an act of self-hatred at that point of time. So you want to be honest, what is happening with this? And a little bit more, you just want to do a little bit more than you did the day before. And then... You, can, you don't have to always, by the way, increase your level of exercise or your cardio. You, some people feel like they always should be trying to outdo the day before. That's not true. You want to outdo what you were doing when you were doing no exercise. But say that you, you know, do 15 minutes of light cardio three times a week. That's great. Just continue doing that. If that works for you, fabulous. It doesn't mean that the next time it has to be 20 and 25 and an hour and two hours and three. No, I I think that's I think that's pretty awesome. And can I can I suggest some homework? Please. 
So because it's fitness month, we have a bunch of people who are trying to all be motivated together. Um, connectedly.com, our new, our new general, what's the right word to describe it? Connected world, connected things, Internet of Things site is taking a lot of the heavy lifting here because there are so many devices that you can use to help improve uh, your health and well-being and stuff like that. But we're going to have uh, activities and articles and a lot of things, a lot of really cool ways to help motivate yourself on all of our sites. So whether it's Android Central or Crackberry or iMore, uh, or WP Central, whatever tech you have, just go there, look for the fitness month stuff, and uh, engage, engage, engage. And then be like, I'll Captain Picard about it. And we're all going to be uh, training and trying to compete as well and have fun and make this a little bit more enjoyable for everyone. So let us know what you do to stick and stay motivated. Uh, go down to our forums, check us out, take a look, and see what we're doing. I'm probably going to be sticking my Fitbit on my dog and no, just <laughs> game the system. Um, make it run around. I've really met your dog. Well. He'll get like three steps a day. I know, I know. It's short legs. It's, it's probably not going to be traveling very <laughs> So yeah, take a look and let us know what works for you, what doesn't, what you like and what you don't like to keep yourself a little bit more fit. And just a programming note, we've got all the video feeds back up so if you haven't already you can subscribe to, I mean the, the best way to, to enjoy Zenitech is to watch the video if you can. We've got that in YouTube. It's imore.com slash, um, sorry, youtube.com slash imorevideo. You can also go to iTunes and subscribe to the Zenitech video podcast. And the audio podcast is, of course, on RSS. It's on iTunes. And you can download it directly on any of the blog posts uh, that the show is attached to. Um, Georgia, if people don't know already, where can they go to find more about you and more about the stuff that you do? imore.com and of course on Twitter you can follow me at Georgia underscore Dow. Uh, you can find me at Rene Ritchie on all the social things. You can find me at Mobile Nations. I want to once again uh, thank Squarespace.com for sponsoring the show. Uh, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform. All you have to do is go to squarespace.com slash zen, enter the offer code zen at checkout and a better web will start with your website. Thank you Squarespace and thank you everyone who is supporting them to support us. Have a good evening, Georgia. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Start trading, everyone. Yay.